Hi friends, welcome back. It's that time of day where we all get to come together to say hello to each other. Now, as we are waiting for people to come in and say hello and get started, I wanted to make sure that I said hello to Nikunj and Nandini. I know you watched the last two videos, so thank you for being here. Along with Jake, I saw you were here also and I didn't say hello. Ellen Lucas, I know that you were here maybe for the first video, so if you're joining us again, hello to you as well. I know that my kids really like to go through and look at the comments to see who else has joined us today. So I'm going to ask you again, come on in and say hello to everyone. Good morning, Zoe. It's good to see you here again. Ava misses you a lot. So I'm glad that you are here with us today. Um, and I would encourage you to read the comments with your children as well so that they know that you are um, in community with others. Even though we aren't together physically, we can be together online. Good morning, Nolan. Again, happy to have you here. Hello, April and Mason. And if I forget your kid's name, or um, just let me know and I'll make sure to say hello to them the next day. So yes, Renzo and Fiona, you watched yesterday. Hello to you as well. Grant, glad to see that you are back. Your comments made me giggle yesterday. So thank you for being here as well. Oh, Jackson and Morgan, if you are here watching, hello, good to see you. CJ and Davis, Nice to see you too. I'm glad that um, we don't have to walk to school a little bit. You don't have to walk home, but I miss seeing your faces bright and early in the morning. Hello, McReynolds family from Oregon. Good to see you. Layla and Alex from Washington. Hello, Houston's all the way from Florida. It's good to see you. Westland, Ford and Pierce. You get to hang out with my little sister today. That's pretty awesome. Good to see you here. Hello from Tate. Good to see you. I hope to see you um, soon. Later, maybe today, you can practice karate with our kids. Sammy and Will, good to see you. Hooray, look at all of these friends. Now, today's story is about polling family, how could I forget you? Landon and Jacob, hello from across the street. I am glad that you are here watching today. Now, today's story, is all about that. Friends, look how many friends are joining us. That is incredible. And that is so, so powerful. My heart is so big knowing that you're here. Oh, hello, Diaz family, McKenna. I see you. I'm gonna give you a virtual hug because I can't give you one in person. Hello, Aiden, also. Good to see you here too. Um, so my heart is just growing bigger and bigger, knowing that our community can be together, at least in this one space. Hello, Grandma. I'm glad that you're watching too. Even though we can't see you, that's okay. All right, now our story today is about making friends. And look how many friends that we all made all across the country in just three short days. That is amazing. Now, before we read, you know what to do. We have to get our bodies ready to listen a little bit. So follow along with me, everybody. Inhale up, stretch those hands to the sky, wiggle your fingers, ah, exhale them down. Get that oxygen flowing. Inhale up again, all the way to the top, wiggle your fingers, roll your shoulders back. Ah, exhale out. We're going to tilt our necks from side. Oh, that feels good. Nice long stretch. And then the other side. The first time I did this, my neck went boop. Just released a little tension. Okay, roll those shoulders back. One last inhale up and then we're gonna get started. Inhale up everybody. Wiggle those hands and then at the top, clap your hands, stretch a little further. And we're going to bring our hands back to our lap and ready to read. Okay, get cozy. Here we go. Today's story is Scaredy Squirrel Makes a Friend. This book was written by Melanie Watt. Hello, my name. Oh, here we go. Hello, my name is Scaredy. 
Warning. Because this book comes with a warning. Scaredy Squirrel insists that everyone brush their teeth with germ-fighting toothpaste before reading this book. Did you brush your teeth today? If you didn't, that's okay. Make sure you do it afterwards. Mackenzie, hello. I see you too. Okay. Scaredy Squirrel doesn't have a friend. He'd rather risk being alone than risk encountering someone dangerous. A squirrel could get bitten. A few individuals Scaredy Squirrel is afraid to be bitten by. Walruses, bunnies, beavers, piranhas, Godzilla. Look at all of these people he's scared to be bitten by. So Scaredy Squirrel finds interesting ways to pass the time all by himself. He reads, he whistles, he crafts, he yawns, he knits, he chats, he counts, until one day he spots, whoa, hello, look at all these things. These are things you can do to pass the time also. Someone perfectly safe, goldfish. Maybe I'll read like this. We can look at the pictures together. The perfect friend, according to Scaredy Squirrel. Bubbly personality, squeaky clean, quiet, no teeth, germ-free. Doesn't do much, but is 100% safe. A few items Scaredy Squirrel needs to make the perfect friend. A lemon name tag, mittens, comb, mirror, air freshener, toothpaste, chew toy, how to make perfect first impression, tame bad hair, prepare freshly squeezed lemonade, brush teeth thoroughly and practice smile, check for nutty breath and food caught between teeth, wear mittens to hide sweaty paws. Make sure name tag is visible. Hello, my name is Scaredy. Use pine scent to smell delightful. Follow the perfect plan. Hello, Richie and Nora. Thanks for being here. The perfect plan. Step one, toss down chew toy to distract biters. I am here. Step two, use mirror to check hair and teeth. Step three, run to fountain. Step four, point to name tag and smile. Step five, offer lemonade. Step six, make the perfect friend. Boop, boop, boop. Goldfish is here. Look what else is going on on this page. We have a legend. We have don't talk to suspicious bunnies. Stay away from piranha infested ponds. Beware of walruses. They're fast on their flippers. Avoid beavers, they could snap at any moment. Watch out for Godzilla for obvious reasons. But let's say just for example that Scaredy Squirrel did come face to face with a potential biter. He knows exactly what not to do. Do not show fear, do not show fingers. Do not make eye contact, do not make any loud noises. If all else fails, play dead. And hand over the test. Scaredy's risk test. I think this is hilarious here. I gotta get a little bit closer for you to see. Who are you? A walrus, bunny, beaver, piranha, Godzilla, or other? How many teeth do you have? Two, 10, 32, 100, 1,000, more? What's your hobby? Biting or other? What do you see? This is hilarious. What do you guys think that shadow is of? Do you see a friend or something to bite? If you want to do this at home, you could take the friend test too. We'll see. Okay. With every detail under control, Scaredy Squirrel puts the plan into action. 
First, he tosses the chew toy. Then he heads down the tree. Everything is perfect and Ellie hears a strange sound coming from behind. Squeak! Woo! Object and mirror are closer than they appear and he realizes, oh, can you predict what is this thing in here? Look, it has cheek teeth. It's a dog! This was not part of the plan. The dog chases Scarity around the bush, around the fountain, around in circles until Scarity Squirrel. <whistles> Time out! Play's dead. 30 minutes later, one hour later, two hours later. After all this time, Scaredy Squirrel realizes that the dog doesn't want to bite him. Oh, look how cute he is. He just wants a friend. Scaredy Squirrel points to his name tag and smiles. Then he starts chasing his new buddy. They play fetch, they play hide and seek, and they play dead. Scaredy Squirrel forgets all about the goldfish, not to mention the walruses, bunnies, beavers, piranhas, and Godzilla. Time flies when you're having fun. Hello, Fred. Hello, AJ and Ethan and Sharon. Good to see you. All this excitement inspires Scaredy Squirrel to make a few minor changes to his idea of a friend. Almost perfect friend. According to Scaredy Squirrel, muddy paws, wet doggy smell, loud bark, drool, tooth, germs, 83% safe, but lots of fun. P.S. As for the wet doggy smell, it's been taken care of. Pine scent. Look, he used the air freshener. <laughs> and his name is Buddy. All right, friends. So uh, I feel like we're making lots of new friends, even though we can't be together. For today's activity, if you notice something that Scaredy Squirrel did in the book is he made a plan. And he made a plan by drawing a map. So, do you see that? What do you notice? There are a lot of things going on in this picture. We see that there is a legend across, oh, my finger's not that long, on this side of the page. And there, it shows you what each symbol along the side means in the bigger picture. There's, well, I'll ask you, what do you see? I know, there are lots of things. I, you, you know what, this is not school. You can shout it out at home. I think I heard someone say a tree or a squirrel. Godzilla. Yes, lots of things. Now I know that some of the young ones are making maps in school. So this is my daughter Mia. She made a map of her park in kindergarten. And you can see along the bottom the key or the legend she drew a symbol to represent the different things that she would find in her park, like a slide, a swing, monkey bars, table, bench, water fountain, and garage can, garbage can. So this is, <laughs> there's no such thing as a garage can, Elena. Okay, so today your activity is to draw a map. You can draw a park map like Mia and her kindergarten class, or, this is Mia's perfect backyard that she drew just this morning with a key, her cat, tree, pond, and dog. She looks like she wants a lot of animals in her perfect backyard. The other things that you could do for your bigger kids, I would suggest you can print off graph paper. I don't know how many of you stock graph paper at home, but you can do a large graph paper for the bigs or, I'm sorry, 
large back graph paper for the smalls people and sort of smaller squares for the big people. And what you can do is using a ruler, I would like you to make a map of your room. Now you can make sure to put things in, what goes in a room? Maybe a bed, maybe a dresser or a desk, a window. You can make your key along the side and fill in what does your perfect room look like? Does it have a cotton candy machine? I don't know, it doesn't matter, it's your room. But what I'd like you to do, if you're old enough and you ask mom and dad's permission, um, you're old enough, you can use a tape measure to actually measure out the dimensions of your room and you can draw your room to scale. And what that means is if your couch, for example, oh, it looks like it's 38 inches deep, then somehow on your paper, I'd like you to make it, how would you make 38 inches? It doesn't have to be exact, it can be approximate, but you can think, hmm, maybe each square on your paper is equal to one foot in real life, um, because those are skills that you can use. And then if you want to get pretty particular, which I might get for my oldest because I know he's able to do it, is use um, this handy dandy ruler to make straight lines because you have the time to do it. Now this might not seem like a bunch of fun yet, although I really like making maps. I think I got that love of map making from my grandpa. He would sit at the, we called him Papa. Papa would sit at the dining room table and I can just remember him looking at maps all the time. Now, after all, if you make a map of your room, you wanna make sure that you keep it. So I would put it in a sheet protector for another fun activity. Who do you know uses maps? to find things. Huh, my kid watching is raising his hand. Um, pirates, pirates use maps. So if you have a map of your room, you can put it in a sheet protector or a large Ziploc baggie and use a dry erase marker and you can make a treasure map. You could say, start here, maybe that's where the door is. And just like Scaredy Squirrel, we saw dotted lines on his map to follow the path that you need to leave lead. Maybe you walk this way, do a couple of turns over here, and maybe you hide something that's precious to you, like a bunny or your teddy or a pot of gold. I don't know who has gold hanging around in your house. Um, maybe you do if the leprechauns came to visit you yesterday. I don't know. So that's your activity today. Your activity is making maps and you can make a friend, whether it be near or far. So I'm going to leave you with the last two reminders. Reminder one, you are never alone. Although it seems a little bit lonely not being able to go and see people that you love, you are never alone. We are all here together, which is really exciting. And the, last, the second thing is, um, be the hero in the story and make sure to wash your hands and keep your distance. All right, that's all I have for you today. We'll see you tomorrow at 8.30. See you later. Bye.